Hello with Engine's Hack Fest. Um, I'm here to talk about a small KSK mount browser prototype that we've been working, working on for one of our customers. We went with CEF as the framework for this project, and I'm going to explain the reasons uh, why we chose CEF and what features it provides that we found helpful for implementing a customized browser experience. Uh, CEF uh, is a framework based on Chromium. Its goal is to help developers add a custom web browser experience to an existing application or to develop a new Chromium-based browser from scratch. One of the primary reasons we chose CEF is that it's cross-platform and it supports both Windows and Linux. Um, adding CEF to your project is pretty straightforward. You only need to link a few libraries provided by CEF, uh, and it will allow you to launch a browser window that has some basic Chromium features. CEF uses uh, Chromium sandboxing and multi-process model, uh, that is separation of browser, IO, and render processes, and it provides an IPC API to send messages between them. The <clears throat> entry point of uh, most of the functionality of the framework uh, is a set of life, life cycle callbacks that you can override to customize the browser behavior. The default implementation is provided, so you only need to implement the features specific to your project. CEF is a, <clears throat> CF is a C++ library, but there are bindings for several other programming languages. We're only using the C++ library. Our customer um, asked us to develop a custom kiosk mode browser for their kiosk terminals. Kiosk mode uh, means that there's only one visible application running on the operating system. The terminals are running Windows, uh, which already limited our potential candidates for browser framework. Also, we were asked to add a few custom features, including disabling file upload and download, opening supported documents in pop-up windows, um, loading customers JS code for their web pages. Uh, that would potentially allow them to add some custom features of their own, like key bindings or logging. Um, also, the the allowed, web, uh, allowed webcams uh, and microphones um, should be configured by the administrator and selected automatically whenever a website uses WebRTC. Um, and also a few small features like custom URL schemes, uh, custom web pages for HTTP errors, uh, or, and using a Windows printing dialog that already has printers configured with the right settings. Now let's talk about uh, how the CEF helps us with uh, supporting these features. First of all, the lifecycle of any web request can be customized. For example, uh, whenever a web request is initiated by clicking on a link or internally by a website, we can intercept it uh, and customize or cancel the request before sending it to the server. Once we get the response back, uh, the response can be customized as well. Uh, that, for example, will allow us to show some custom HTTP error pages. Custom URL schemes uh, that were mentioned before are uh, also supported. Uh, we can override a callback for whenever a, whenever a resource with a certain URL scheme is requested and add some custom behavior in that case. We can also override uh, file upload or download behavior. Um, in our case, we show the supported documents in a pop-up window instead of downloading them and cancel the requests for unsupported files. CF doesn't come with Chromium Download Manager UI. By default, the files are just downloaded in, in the background and saved to the default location. But uh, CF allows us to implement a Download Manager UI ourselves if needed, since we can change a download destination uh, there are callbacks whenever a new chunk of data is downloaded, so we can track progress and so on. Or if the developer needs even more precise control over downloads, they can just use their own code for downloading file. 
CEF comes with the subset of Chromium Views Framework. Uh, in our case, we needed to automatically determine pop-up window position and size, and CEF allowed us to do, to do that. Um, CEF also comes with the smaller handy features like logging, uh, locales, uh, proxy support, and hosting a remote debugging page. Standard library similar to Chromium base library is included. Uh, it's useful for working with strings, processes, threads, or reference counting objects. More advanced features of CEF include working with JavaScript. CEF provides lifecycle hooks for the render process uh, that can be used to execute any JS or C++ code in the context of the page. Um, a simple system for adding extension APIs is provided. It's uh, really similar to extension APIs in Chromium. Uh, there are wrappers around VA objects for using C++ implementation of the JS functions. Uh, that allows us to cover all our needs for extensions and also to implement all the selecting of microphones and web cameras for WebRTC. We do that through patching WebRTC APIs uh, when certain pages are loaded. In general, the process of adding custom extension or web APIs uh, was straightforward and it was very similar to how extension APIs are added to Chromium itself. Uh, JavaScript bindings uh, can be asynchronous, uh, which for example allows, allows your render process to communicate with other processes while the JS function caller is waiting for a result. For example, that is useful for doing any I.O. operations, since render process is not allowed to do any I.O. In terms of performance, uh, CF is similar to a one-page Chrome browser, though RAM usage seems to be a little bit lower. We tested our application on a virtual machine with uh, 500 megabits of RAM, uh, and a browser with just the Google homepage opened used about 70 megabits of RAM. The Windows installer, uh, as well as the unpacked browser, uh, used just about 60 megabytes of disk space. CPU usage is uh, similar to Chromium, though we didn't do any precise measurements and our virtual machines had a good amount of CPU allocated, so we didn't have any issues there. Updating CEF uh, was straightforward. CF has release branches uh, that are tracking Chromium releases and binaries are released regularly uh, with Chromium releases as well. We didn't have any issues with the stability of the APIs, so if any changes happen, they just seem to be infrequent. Um, some of the minor bugs that we faced uh, were fixed with newer versions, so in our experience, uh, much more bugs are fixed than introduced, which is a good thing. Um, so, to summarize, CEF was extremely easy to set up and get started both on Windows and Linux. The code was cross-platform um, unless we needed to add some Windows-specific features of our own. To get started, we looked at CEF projects already available online as a reference. Um, official tutorial and documentations were great. There was no problem finding an API needed for a specific feature. Uh, also, CF has a forum that already has discussions for most of the issues that we faced. Um, the community is responsive and welcoming to the newcomers. Whenever you have a problem uh, with understanding how certain things work, you can also take a look at the CF code. And if you have some prior Chromium development experience, it's very easy to figure everything out. We faced some minor bugs, just a few, but they usually were already reported and well known, and they were fixed with the next release. Though sometimes you can find some bugs that you're already familiar with uh, carried over from Chromium. It seems like it's easy to patch CF for your needs uh, or send a patch to upstream, but we never had to do that, which means that it's probably a uh, feature complete for all the common use cases. So thank you for your attention.